Hello and welcome back to the 51st episode of my still unnamed survival series. Today, we had a bit of a case of motivation madness. I couldn't keep my head on straight with any of the projects that I wanted to do today. The motivation was just not there. So we're gonna be skipping around our world doing a little bit of everything. To start this off, I think we're gonna pick up where we left off on episode 49 and continue to drain our ocean. We're not gonna be able to do this with redstone, unfortunately. We're gonna have to go back to the old method and the way we drained our swamp and build up some sand walls and drain this all by hand with some sponges. So we're gonna grab a couple stacks of sand and start placing it underneath the water. Just like our swamp, we're doing this five blocks wide just so the water doesn't collapse when we start to drain it. Well, that didn't last long. We're completely out of sand. So we're gonna go over to our sand mine with quite a few shulker boxes and try and fill up about 10 of them. Here we are at my sand mine, which also happens to house my end portal. I kind of want to destroy the village that's right above it, and it's a desert, which helps. I have a lot of plans for buildings and ideas for this general location that's all end portal themed, and that requires a lot of terraforming. So we're going to do a little bit of multitasking here and steal the sand while terraforming the area mostly for the sand. Since we're only interested in the sand today, I haven't brought anything to actually terraform with, only to uh, store and steal and pillage with. I've brought about 11 shulker boxes with me and 10 of those are only gonna be for sand. The 11th is for storing other things I randomly pick up. Clearing out that ocean took a lot more sand than I initially thought. We've already used 15 shulker boxes for the perimeter of that. We're gonna need a lot more for the interior. The good thing is at the end of this project, we're gonna get all the sand back, but for now, it's just a pain. We've gathered our 10 shulker boxes of sand and now we're just gonna take them back to the base and throw it all in the ocean. So I'm just gonna scoop up all of our shulker boxes and start chucking it into the deepest parts of our ocean. I uh, definitely don't think 10 shulker boxes of sand was enough to get this done, but on the plus side, once we get two walls down, we can just demolish the second. But now we actually have three walls up, and no, we're not out of sand. I just got really, really bored and don't feel like making sand walls anymore. So I think we're gonna go find something equally as tedious and boring to do. Yep. So I think the test to try is mining a little bit more from our pit. Eventually, this needs to go all the way down to bedrock, but for now, we're just gonna try and level it out. While I'm mining this out, I'm gonna try and pick up and keep every single item I mine. This is gonna give us a lot of resources to work with in the future. This is a little odd. This is a full beacon. It should be reaching these corners, and it's not reaching any of the corners here. I laid out this square using the beacon's effect. Why is it not reaching the corners? It, it reached the corners before. I wonder if the newest update changed the way beacons work. Huh. It's not completely flattened, but we did do quite a bit of work, but I think I'm done with that for now. I'm just not feeling like doing anything grindy today. I don't know why. But I think we're just gonna put all of our shulker boxes away in their proper places. We did build a fancy storage system, so we might as well try and stay organized. We're gonna have a lot of stone by the time that is done. I think we're gonna take a step back from the grinding activities. It's just not, it's not hitting right for me today. So I think we're gonna do a couple smaller projects and try and find a nice place to put them. Right here might seem pretty nice. We could finally get rid of our old sheep pen. I would like to build some stones or some trees. I haven't really decided yet. And what we build is also gonna affect where we put them. I'm leaning more towards the trees, just cause this looks a little barren and I'd like to add some color into this world. I think right here would be nice for a tree. Yeah, I think we're gonna do that, actually. The types of tree we're gonna be building is a sakura tree or a Japanese cherry tree. I've always liked the look of those trees and we're gonna build a colossal one in this world eventually, so it'd be nice to tie it in thematically with the rest of the world. So I think we're gonna put some small to medium sized ones in the village and as we move further away from the town, they're gonna get bigger and bigger. Kinda like the large ones were chopped down, leaving the smaller ones to decorate the village or like they were planted here. I don't know, that's just kind of the, the vibe I'm going with. But I'd like to build two, maybe three of those, I think. 
When I think of a sakura tree or cherry tree, they're usually pink when I think about it. So we're going to be using some pink building materials like pink concrete, pink wool, and I'm thinking pink glazed terracotta. So I'm going to get a whole bunch of pink dye by breeding these red flowers and mixing them with bone meal. Wait, why am I doing this? We have an iron farm that produces poppies. Perfect. Now that we have our dye, I went ahead and grabbed some terracotta and I'm gonna dye all of this pink. I really like the pink glazed terracotta. I think it'll fit pretty well for our application, but I think that the normal pink terracotta is a little bit too dark to use. I also really like how the glazed pink terracotta has a design on it that kind of looks like flower petals. We're also going to need some pink concrete, so I'm going to jump over to our mega base and steal some of the sand that we just mined. I've got the sand, made the concrete, and now we're going to turn it all into the solid concrete so we can actually place it like leaves. The flat texture of the concrete I also think is going to work to appease the visually loud textures of the wool and the glazed terracotta. Or at least that's my thought process anyway. I think that I'd also like to get some pink stained glass and pink stained glass panes. So we're gonna grab a couple emeralds and start buying some glass. Eventually, I do think I'm gonna beef up my trading hall and give all of my specific villagers different places to go. So we're not gonna have one trading hall that houses all of the villagers. We're gonna have a whole bunch of little houses and little areas that hold different types of villagers. So we're gonna have the iron and blacksmiths in the iron section they're probably gonna be near the iron farm to be honest and we're gonna have the librarians in a library and the priesty people in a church of some form i think doing something like that would actually be really cool and add a lot to the general world building side of things I almost forgot to grab our wool. We're gonna need a lot of this, probably around three stacks of the pink wool. I really like the texture of the wool and I like using it as leaves or grass or any other planty type thing. I think it generally fits pretty well. And on the organic side of things, we do need to figure out what kind of wood we want to use. So we're gonna take a hop, skip and a fly over to our wood storage section over here and pick out what might work best. I don't think the spruce would look that good, but I do think the dark oak would look pretty good. You just need to figure out where I have it stored. I know I've got it somewhere around here, but I don't think I have any more saplings. Oh, here we are. Perfect. I think we're gonna grab three stacks of this dark oak. Uh, maybe, maybe a little more, because I think we're going to make some planks and stairs out of it as well. Just to give us a little bit of added detail with the shape of the trunk. Now that we have our colors and our building materials picked out, we're going to start by building the base of the trunk and giving it kind of a root effect where it just spreads out towards the bottom of the trunk. I'd like to get four or five fingers almost spreading out in different directions. What we got may be a little too big, so we're probably going to have to work this down a little bit. It's a little bit uh, blobbish, and you can't really tell what's going on at all. I'm trying to get the log texture to go in pretty much every direction, because if you look at an actual soccer tree or cherry tree, the trunk kind of spirals up. Everything's not in a straight line. It's twisty almost and that's the effect that I'm trying to get with the texture of the logs that's also going to be the effect I'm going to try and get when I build the trunk up as well so I'm just going to walk around and kind of build this up in a twisting motion until I get to the top and then from the edges of that twist I'm going to work out a couple of branches heading in probably four directions maybe five on the bigger versions of this tree and I'm also going to try and work the branches up a little bit just to give this a little bit more depth with the shape I'm not too experienced in building trees, but this is what I've come up with so far, and this is the method I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go around and connect the branches in some sort of almost like beaten up circle, like it's been punched quite a bit. Gonna have ripples and wrinkles all the way around this tree, and then from that leading edge, I'm gonna work up kind of a dome shape. This is the outcome of my squish circle, and we're gonna build this up using the pink wool and then come back and retexture it later on. I'm gonna be building this like I'm building the top section of a dome where each layer comes in by the double amount until it connects about in the center. And then from there, I'll just eyeball the shape. This is the finished profile of the domey leaf thing. 
And now that it's finished, we're going to go ahead and texture it all up using our pink concrete and our pink glazed terracotta. I think I'm also going to try and use some of the pink stained glass as well and give this kind of an interesting texture. A little bit softer of a texture, I think. You could also do a gradient of some sort from pink to white or white to pink because sakura trees are also white. And that might be pretty cool. We might actually do that on a few of them just to break up the monotony of the all pink leaves, you know? And this is a good looking tree. It's a little odd with the trunk and we're going to be trying to fix that with some slabs and junk. But this is how the leaves turned out. It looks pretty good from down here and it looks pretty good from up here as well. I'm actually surprised at how well this turned out. So I'm going to go ahead and thicken up the trunk with some slabs and some stairs and see if I can get it looking a little bit better than it already does. I'm actually really happy with how this turned out. I think with the slabs, I'm just gonna try and connect everything up that looks a little awkward and make it, I don't like that, make it look a little bit more like the roots sprawling out smaller, if that makes sense. But connecting things up and making things look smooth in their transitions is my main goal when placing the slabs. And here's the finished tree, slabs and all. I I really like how this turned out. I really like how this turned out. I like the height, I like the width. Everything about this tree I just adore. But now we need to find a place for our second one. I was kind of thinking back over here, but now I'm not so sure. So I think we're gonna take a fly up and just kind of feel it out where we should put the second one. Hmm. Honestly, I'm kind of thinking right here in this little triangle divot thing. I think it would fit pretty well. Let's get a let's get a second look. Mm, not here. One might fit over there. No, nothing over there yet. Yeah, yeah, I'm thinking right here. This spot right here is going to be the home for our second tree. So I'm going to go ahead and clear out all of these berries and make some room for it. I think I'm going to try and make this tree a little bit bigger in pretty much every way. I think I'm also going to be trying to make it look like it's sloped a little bit since we're kind of building this on a hill. I don't know. We're just going to be trying out quite a bit of different things with the way we're building this one. My goal with all the trees and foliage in this world is to make them all just a little bit different and all a little bit unique. That way they're not just carbon copies of each other sprawled out the world and it doesn't look like a copy and pasted world. I want it to be noticeable that when somebody steps foot in this world that it's evident that I put a lot of thought into even the smallest of details. That's uh, that's the hope anyway. <laughs> Since this trunk is a little bit bigger than the last one, I've tried to carve out almost like spirals in this. That way it's kind of evident that the trunk itself is twisting and spiraling up and out. That's just what I'm trying to do, but I'm curious about what you would do. How would you build this tree if you were in my position? What is something that you would do differently? I think the branches with this one are going to be a lot wider as well. Just to try and keep everything in proportion, this is a little bit taller and quite a bit thicker than our other Sakura tree. But we're gonna give that a look. Yeah, I kinda like that. Could be a little bit bigger. Maybe a, maybe a couple more branches for the size. I think our branches are looking pretty dang good, so we're gonna start on the canopy of this tree. Starting off the exact same way with our smush circle. And hopefully we can get this looking just as beautiful as our last one. This is going to be a little bit more complicated. It's a little bit bigger and a little bit more difficult to get this looking perfect. But so far, I think we're doing all right. But unfortunately, we are out of wool. So I'm going to go ahead and detail this a little bit and add our textures just so I can finish this out. I definitely underestimated the amount of pink wool I needed for these trees. But uh, we're going to come back and look at this once it's all finished up. And here is our second Sakura tree finished. Well, almost. There's still a lot of details that I would like to throw onto these trees and into the village, but for now, I think these are a great addition and brings this whole town together. I'd still like to throw some of the glass panes underneath the trees and make it kind of look like there's petals falling down. And there's also another pink block in this game that I think I'd like to try and track down. The pink block in question found only in the lush caves. This is, of course, the Spore Blossom. I think this would be a great addition to the underside of our Sakura trees. 
as well as allowing us to hide some light blocks and give us some texture in the area as well. So I think we are gonna go deep into the lush caves and try and find a couple spore blossoms. If I recall correctly, after the world got extended underneath here, a lush cave biome was added somewhere underneath the village. I dug into it by accident before, but I can't remember exactly where, but I know that it was near zero zero, so I think we're gonna dig straight down at exactly zero zero and see if we find ourselves in a lush cave. I marked out where zero zero was in a previous episode because I wanna put some form of temple here eventually. Once our village reaches this direction, this is gonna be the place of something. I'm not entirely sure yet, but this is where I'm gonna be digging straight down and trying to find our cave. I've started the descent into the recesses of our world and this is definitely gonna be a cave below the deep slate level. Everything above here is still the normal 1.16 old style world. What? What? Why are there... Why are there boats here? How are there boats here? Um... Three boats, what the heck? That, uh... Doesn't make any sense. I'm confused, but we're gonna keep digging. I have no idea how deep this might- oh. That- that deep. Cool! We found a lush cave. I'm gonna go ahead and steal some of these moss blocks because uh, I seem to have uh, lost mine. But at least now we have a stable source of moss and that is a spore blossom that I see up on the roof there. There's actually a couple. Perfect! I'm not sure how rare these blocks are, but I want to get at least a few. It's also kind of weird that there's no mobs in here. I mean, I guess they do need zero light now. But I'm just gonna go ahead and take that. And that. And this is mine now, of course. I have gathered up about four spore blossoms, and that's two for each tree. I'd like to get a little bit more in the future, but for now, I'm just gonna slap these two on the bottom of each Sakura tree and call them done. I'm just gonna steal the scaffolding for this next bit, because we need to get to the bottom of the tree to place some sea lanterns and a little bit more wool. I'd like to even up the underside of this canopy and texture it up as well. You know, I wish they had concrete slabs, something to add texture and depth to your colored places. Like, it's only gray blocks and dark blocks that have slabs. I don't really build with the dark colors too much, I like the brighter stuff. Mojang, can you add concrete slabs? I've got the underside of this tree all finished up and textured, so I'm just gonna hop up here and place our spore blossom. I might replace these sea lanterns with frog lights once I build that farm and have access to that block, but for now, we're just gonna keep it with sea lanterns. And of course, we've gotta add the spore blossoms on the smaller Sakura tree as well. We're gonna do two per tree. Eventually, we might add a fourth and 17th, depending on how things go, because I would like to find more of these spore blossoms eventually. But for now, we're just gonna leave it at this. I think this creates just enough texture and ambiance for the area, but I would like to play around with the spore blossoms a little bit more in the future. And with the addition of our soccer trees, I think we're gonna call it an episode right here. I would be lying if I said I had a lot of fun making this episode. It was definitely uh, challenging to stay motivated, but I'm pretty happy with what we accomplished today. So we're gonna end things on that positive note and say our goodbyes. My name is Red Skies, and I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed that episode today, you might enjoy my other content on this channel, as well as my other socials. They're down in the left-hand corner, held by my social cats, the ones biting the social scroll. Feel free to check that out as well. But enough of that self-promotion, thank you for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it.